Oh, sorry, I was, hello, sorry, I was muted there. Um, so I'm Laura Lewis, welcome to the class on um, hydrocarbons and fractional distillation. Um, this class will be uh, focused on answering exam questions um, on the hydrocarbons uh, topic. So let's start reading a question. Okay, so it starts off uh, with a shorter response and we're going to longer um, extended answer questions. So crude oil is a mixture of many different chemical compounds. Fuels such as petrol or gasoline, sometimes known as, can be produced from crude oil. So crude oil is what you uh, dig out of the ground. So when it's filmed, you see sort of oil coming up out of the ground. That's crude oil. Okay, so it's very sort of like thick, sort of sticky, it's quite like tar kind of thing. So yeah, crude oil. So it's a mixture of many different chemical compounds. Fuels such as petrol, uh, gasoline, can be produced from crude oil. Fuels react with oxygen to release energy. Name the type of reaction that uh, releases energy from a fuel. So you may not immediately think you think, okay, that's a that's a complicated answer, but it's not. What that what that really means um, is how you actually um, get energy from the fuel. So what you actually do is you burn it, don't you? Effectively. So what 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 we actually call that in science is combustion. Okay, so it's one mark, so it needs one uh, word, combustion. Okay, you may have heard of the internal combustion engine. Okay, that was invented in um, England and Victorian times. Okay, so fuels react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. The reaction of a fuel with oxygen can produce a different oxide of carbon. Name this different oxide of carbon and explain why it is produced. So generally, when things combust, you'll create um, yep, carbon dioxide as described. But what happens when there's insufficient oxygen? OK, so anyone that has gas, a gas cooker or gas heater in the house, you need to have a carbon monoxide detector. I've got one. You need a carbon monoxide detector in the house. If you've got anything that uses any form of gas, even a heater, you need to have one. Okay, because and this is obviously um, part of this question as well. So if a fuel combusts with insufficient, that means not enough. So it's insufficient, so not enough oxygen, carbon monoxide will be produced. Okay, so that will actually get you two marks. Okay, it's because of carbon dioxide, think of the word dioxide, there's two oxygens there. And with monoxide, there's one, like mon means one, so that like monorail, okay, it means uh, one, one thing. Di, dioxide means two. Okay, so it's when yeah, there's not enough oxygen, so carbon monoxide. And um, you may know that carbon monoxide is very, very dangerous um, to humans. So if you breathe in, we can't actually uh, uh, gain oxygen from it. So we need to have an alarm in the house because you can't smell it. It's not like smoke or anything. So you need to have that in the house if you've got any sort of gas um, to tell you if there's carbon monoxide being produced. Okay, because over time it's um, it's very, very dangerous to humans, it can cause health problems and eventually you can actually kill people from uncontrolled. So you're an alarm, the alarm book, because I've actually heard one go off before, it's very loud. So yeah, if you haven't got one, pressure your parents to buy one, very, very important um, and things in the house. Okay, so let's go into the next bit of the question. Most of the com compounds in crude oil are hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons with the smallest molecules are very volatile. So volatile means it evaporates easily. So example, um, things like sort of um, alcohol is very volatile. Okay, so let's have a look. So you've got a fractionating column here. Crude oil goes in, bitumen like you used to make roads, comes out, yeah, it gets like tar. Uh, petrol is up here, gases. Okay, and then there's some other, other things over here that are not labeled. Okay, it says in this question, because yeah, it's going to be a six mark one. You see that? It's always a six mark one. In this question, you will be assessed on using good English, organizing information clearly, 
and using specialist terms where appropriate. Describe and explain how petrol is separated from the mixture of hydrocarbons in crude oil. Use the diagram and your knowledge to answer this question. Okay, so this is a, a fractionating column. Okay, so let's talk about it. So what, what's happening here? So in a uh, fractionating column, so in fractional distillation, process, that's a fractionating column in fractional distillation. Um, it's not cracking. It's okay. Be careful of that. That's this is not cracking. Okay, what we're doing is heating up the crude oil, um, and it's different different parts of it condense out at different points. So that's what we're going to write. Fractional distillation, crude oil is heated until let me see you out there until all all of it has evaporated so it's very hot the different um compounds uh, they're known as fractions would be another word for that it's called a fractionating column the different compounds within the crude oil then condense out at different points. Okay, the um, the fraction, so we, I'll use that word, with the highest boiling points and hence lowest condensation points will um, collect near the bottom of the fractionating column okay yeah it's like the bitumen like the eg so example the bitumen so near the bottom of the paraffin wax Okay, so again, yeah, it requires you to know a bit about, you know, you need to revise this and look in the book and things to know a bit about what other fractions are produced, because they obviously you can see here they could ask you about it and maybe even label it. Okay, and collect near the bottom. So the uh, fractions with, um, yeah, relatively low, so relatively, because it's comparing it, so relatively means comparing it low boiling points um, are collected near the top of the fractionating column and um, these would be petrol and other fuel products. Steel's a bit further down. Okay. So gases, so this is where natural gas comes from as well. So gases will remain gases and leave the column right at the top. Okay, so, can, so the gases have got such a low boiling point they won't actually condense out. Okay, they won't they won't actually condense out. Uh, they will still stay as um, as, as as gases. Um, so yeah, we have to be careful of knowing um, about yeah some of the fractions here. So you need to just find out what fractions have a, lo a relatively lower boiling point, so which ones are relatively high, because we could be asked to label. Okay, so a little bit of memorization uh, may be required with this one. Okay, right, so this is recorded, so if you, I'm sure you can just play me back, can't you? Okay, another one about, about crude oil fractions. A little, bit, a little bit different, so you mix it up a bit because they can ask you lots of things. Okay, so it says in this question again, so it's another six mark question. So in this question, you will be assessed on using good English 
organizing information clearly and using specialist terms where appropriate. This is crude oil is separated to produce the fraction petroleum diesel. Okay, so that's something other cars take, and that's all about diesel a minute ago, yeah, coincidentally. So diesel's a bit heavier, a bit sort of thicker than petrol. Worries about low supplies of crude oil have led to the growing of large areas of crops to produce vegetable oil. Okay. Vegetable oils are used to produce biodiesel. These are economic, ethical, and environmental. Oh, there are, sorry, there are economic, ethical, and environmental issues about the use of biodiesel. The biodiesel bio and petroleum diesel are used as fuels for cars. In a car engine, the fuel burns and releases waste products through the car exhaust system. Yes, yeah, the combustion we talked about. Table one shows the amount of waste products formed by biodiesel compared with the amount of waste products formed by petroleum diesel. Because there's note that parts per ppm is parts per million. Okay, so it's a table for us to look at. So we've got biodiesel carbon dioxide in parts per million. So 20,000 for biodiesel, 80,000 for petroleum diesel. So um, carbon dioxide more is produced by petroleum diesel. But the reason why we don't want, um, we don't want obviously too much carbon dioxide produced is because um, it leads to climate change. Okay, we're trying to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we release into the atmosphere uh, to prevent too much climate change. It raises the temperature of the earth and that's not as straightforward as just warming the earth up because warming the earth up can lead to changes in weather patterns. So some places will actually have droughts, some places actually can have um, flooding. That's not as straightforward. So let's have a look at something else. So nitrogen oxides in parts per million, 760, 700. Okay, so actually nitrogen oxides are also... Um, a pollutant, so you've got more nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide can lead to acid rain, so sulfur dioxide, um, zero for biodiesel, okay, that's good, petroleum diesel 300, okay, so some of these things are biodiesel uh, much higher, particulates, particulates so like it's a soot and things like that, they go into the atmosphere, biodiesel 0.3, petroleum diesel 0.6, okay, so let's look at what it's asking us. Use this information and your knowledge to understand uh, understanding to give advantages and disadvantages of using biodiesel instead of petroleum diesel. Okay, so um, let's think about the advantages and disadvantages. So let's look at advantages first. So advantages of biodiesel. So um, it produces less carbon dioxide. So we're reading straight off the table. So we don't actually even need to have any kind of knowledge really here, do we? It's a very, yeah, again, it's a very lucky question to get. Produces no sulfur dioxide. Okay. Uh, produces less, so we're just reading off the table, aren't we? We don't even need to know anything about science. Really, it is. So it produces um, less particulates. So I should be saying advantage of biodiesel over petroleum diesel. I think that would probably be a bit better. It produces as particulates. Okay, because um, so let's explain a bit of why as well. So it does not contribute as much to global warming or climate change produces no sulfur dioxide and you get sulfur dioxide um, contributes in other word to acid rain okay so an acid rain change acid rain can cause damage to the environment and ecosystems, especially marine life. Okay. 
Um, so it produces this, so also um, carbon dioxide um, can lead to ocean acidification and death of corals and other marine life. I'm adding, we've got lots of information here, so, so less and pollution. Okay, so for particular, it's sort of like certain things like that. Um, also, I haven't, sort of, haven't really mentioned it, that biodiesel um, is renewable. Okay, so that means we just grow more of it. So we can grow more of it when it runs out. So also a sustainable. Okay, so let's have what we've answered so far. Give advantages and disadvantages of using biodiesel instead of uh, yeah. So we're talking about mainly the biodiesel, not the petroleum diesel. Okay, so we've got advantages there, right? Disadvantages. So disadvantages of biodiesel. Right, that's why. Disadvantage, okay, so the only one thing, if we look back, was it produces more nitrogen oxides at the table. More nitrogen oxides. All right, there's some things now we have to, it's not in the table, we just have to know or revise in a book. So because it's a crop, okay, because it's a crop, so crops need to be grown. This may require deforestation. So they may need to chop down trees in forests to make room for land and crops. So it does happen with lots of things. Um, and then that also obviously could lead to ecosystem damage. So deforestation could lead to destruction of habitats. The wild um, crops, so it's all sort of associated with the similar things. Quite sort of geography. We're getting onto kind of mixing science and geography. Cause you could be asking your geography exam as well. This type of thing, because yeah, it's where science and geography cross over. So crops could fail. Okay, if the weather conditions are not appropriate. That does happen sometimes. Sometimes the weather um, is not right for the crop you're growing. Could just be a year and you get a crop failure. Also, there's one thing um, that's not as obvious as well, is that if the demand for biodiesel is high, okay, the crop could be grown, I would say, at the expense, um, which like instead of, instead of food crops in some countries, because it makes money for them, but this could lead to food shortages. Uh, basically, because they don't they don't grow the food. Okay, so some countries, um, yeah, if the government, so some some governments are not um, can say that they might allow, that, yeah, if they if the government can make money off that off the biodiesel crop or, or sell it to another country, they might grow it in expensive food for the people in that country. Okay, so yeah, there's some sort of complex geography knowledge as well as science. So it'd be in your books and things about biodiesel. So some things are on the table, okay, and some things are just from knowledge, okay? So that's, that's what we need to um, think about when answering these questions, okay? So make sure everything's been answered. So um, advantages and dis disadvantages using biodiesel. 
So the petroleum diesel. Okay, so we've answered um, the advantages, produces less carbon dioxide and explained, produces no sulfur dioxide and explained, produces less particulates and less certain pollution. Biodiesel is renewable, so that's part of that, and disadvantages. So it produces no, more nitrogen oxide, surprisingly. Crops need to be grown, okay, yet yeah, may require deforestation. And then obviously the rest of it comes from that really, deforestation yet yeah, leads to destruction of habitats, it could fail, or um, yet yeah, could be grown at the expense of food crops. So thank you for coming to this class. Um, hope it's been useful for you. Um, hope to see you in a future one. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>